One minute, one minute to driver introductions, one minute to driver introductions. Adam. Good afternoon, race fans, and welcome to Delaware Speedway for rounds number nine and ten of the NASCAR Pinty Series. The quick, quick fire starter 125 is how we're going to kick things off. My name is Adam Ross. Joining me is Brendan Doherty. We are about to introduce you to the starting lineup, but let's also welcome. What a phenomenal crowd here this weekend. It has been an amazing three days of racing here at Delaware Speedway. Let's welcome our fans watching on TSN.ca, the TSN Go app, NBC Gold Track Pass. Lots of people, Brendan, interested in championship day here for the NASCAR Pinty Series. It's come down to the wire, a five-point advantage for Alex Tagliani coming into today over LP Dumont. Two races to settle it, and nobody's out of this. It's only 26 points back to fourth place DJ Kennington. This one's wide open. Two races, anything can happen here this afternoon. Mathematically, DJ Kennington came into these last three races with a slim chance. He had to pick up 15 points per race on average over the last three races. He picked up 20 points Friday night, so, so he is on track. He's on his way. We'll see if he's able to do it here, but he does have a fast, right fast race car. Drivers have made their way three, to their race cars. One, Let's introduce you to the starting lineup for the Quick Quick Fire Starters 125 rolling off in the 21st spot from Oshweekin, Ontario. The GSR Tricor Transport 12 gauge custom Chevrolet number 19, Glenn Styers. Starting 20th from Toronto, the rigid Ryobi Queensway Truck Center Dodge number 61, Brent Weller. Starting 19th from Toronto, the RGC Sports Mark Dom Das Metal Chevrolet number 2, TJ Renamato. In the 18th position, out of Toronto, Ontario, the the R Club Formula Car Thrills Dark Horse Trailers Dodge. The 56 is Malcolm Strawn. To Strawn's inside, starting from the 17th position, out of Oakville, the O'Neill Electric Supply, Milwaukee Tools, L LJR Dodge. It's action, Larry Jackson. On the outside of row number eight, from Toronto. The Curb Records, Brock Street Brewing Company Chevrolet, number 98, Sam Fellows. Starting 15th from Mount Bridges, Ontario, the TRS Components, Jar Excavating Ford, number 36, Cole Powell. We move to 14th on the grid. Your points leader coming into this race. At Lachini, Quebec, the run on Viagra, St. Hubert, Cantorque, 440 Chevrolet. The 18 is Alex Tagliani. To the inside, row 7, the 13th starting position. Out of Kahnawake, Quebec, the Bullies truck stop Chevrolet. This is Dexter Stacy. Starting 12th from Dorchester, Ontario, the North Country Property Maintenance Hub Chevrolet number 8, Shay Gamel. Starting 11th from Calgary, Alberta, the Fast Eddie Speedwear TCB Trailer Chevrolet number 3, Brett Taylor. On the outside of row number five in the tenth position, driving the APC, Ken Yusuf Ford, head of Brampton, Ontario. The number seven is Pete Shepard the third. To the inside, row five, starting in the ninth position, out of Toronto River, Quebec, the weather tech, Bellemare Dodge. This is L. P. Dumoulin. Starting eighth from Boy Chatel, Quebec, the Teed Chevrolet XPN Chevrolet number 80, Donald Teed. 
starting position seven now. Starting, position starting in seventh from Roxton Pond, Quebec. The miles for migraine Canadian Super Sellers Dodge number 51, Andrew Ranger. The outside of row number three, he comes to us from St. Eustache, Quebec. Job with the bumper to bumper, Blackcraw tuning Dodge. The 74 is Kevin Lacroix. From the fifth position, from St. Leonard to Stan, Quebec, the GM Pale Chevrolet, this is Mark Antoine Cameron. Row number two on the outside. From Stainer, Ontario, the Leland Industries, RGC Sports, NTN Chevrolet number 64, Brandon Watson. And starting third from Terrebonne, Quebec, the Motos Limite, DLGL.com, Castrol Canada Dodge, number 52, Alex Gannett. To our front row, outside, second fast qualify here this afternoon out of St. Thomas, Ontario, the Castrol Edge, Spark Power Corporation, Cathcart Trucking Dodge, the 17, it is D.J. Kennington. And to our pole sitter, out of Grimsby, Ontario, fast qualifier here this afternoon with a 19090 and a brand new track record, the number 20 in the RGC Sports Quick Wick Chevrolet, it is Trayton Lapsevich. Yep. Yep. Race fans, at this time, we'd ask you to please rise and remove your hats for the playing of the National Anthem. These race car drivers will have five minutes to strap into their race machines and then it'll be ready for the most famous words in motorsports and I can see the gang is all there from Quick Quick. We've got the Kate Name the Caveman Contest winners, Mark and Tim, down there at the start finish line. Well, we've got other VIP guests, Jeff and Jason. And I gotta say, they, they received a ton of entries for the Name the Caveman competition, but boy, did they ever come up with a good one. Burnswell. That's fantastic. Burnswell is the name of the caveman. They're gonna call him Bernie for short. I just think that's brilliant. So as we prepare for things to get underway, we talked about the points coming into this afternoon. Alex Tagliani. This is one of those seasons that, that you don't see all the time. We have over the, over the course of time, 
there has generally been a dominant driver every season, whether it was Andrew Ranger on his way to championships or Scott Steckley or DJ Kennington. 2021 has been the kind of year where if you were consistently good, you've got a shot. And Alex Tagliani, Brendan, and LP Dumlin were good all year long. They really didn't have any giveaway races, and that's why they're the two at the top of the chart. And that's it. I mean, eight starts this year, seven finishes for both of them inside the top ten. The only deciding factor is for Tagliani, six top five finishes over four for Dumlin. That set him just a little bit further ahead in this point standings, but those two drivers just a little bit ahead of everyone else just on consistency, whereas everyone else has uh, had their ups and downs this year. But it's a long afternoon, two races. I know the backup car is ready if need be for some of these teams, but everyone hoping to get through the first one here with the quick, quick 125 clean to get to the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150 to close things out. Alex Tagliani, the, uh, Tagliani, wow. That Rona Viagra number 18 Chevrolet. He's starting deep in the field. This happened on Friday night, and he really never recovered from, from a subpar qualifying effort. I mean, Alex Tagliani demands the best from himself, demands the best from his team. Friday night was not typical of the kind of year they've had. He's not off to a great start today either. He's going to start fairly deep in this field. Yeah, the team's been uh, working hard this afternoon in the pit area. They've overcome some some issues mechanically with the car to make sure they're at 100% to make sure they're good to go to get to the end because that's the important thing. You, you got you to gotta be there at the end to get the finish, and they're going to have a, a hard drive this afternoon coming from 14th on the grid. Going to have to make some passes to try to keep themselves in the points lead at the end of this one. You know, unlike other season finales, most years you, you enter a race where there's pit stops. You're going to take on tires. You're going to take on fuel. So you can make up spots on pit road. You can also lose spots on pit road. Uh, that's not what we have today. 125 laps for these cars. That's a sprint race. If you have to come to pit road, you have had a bad day, and, and you're going to be struggling to earn points tonight. It's all about who can get up front and stay up front. And the only thing some of these drivers are going to be hoping for is maybe that early caution. The car's not handling the way they want it to. If there's a very early caution, they can identify that. They can get to pit road and make those adjustments. But 45 minutes of practice this afternoon, you're going off of those notes, and you're going off what you got on Friday night when you were here. So... A little bit of work for the teams to do, but we'll see what happens at the end of this one. We're less than two minutes away from the moment we've been waiting for. And as we look up and down the front straightaway, most of the crew chiefs are just kind of standing, standing at attention next to these race cars. It's when you can see them inside the cars thrashing away at different things. That's when you have a little bit of concern, but looks like everything is under control. We've had a big afternoon of, of drivers having problems. We saw Cole Powell with a problem under the hood of that race car during his second qualifying lap. He'll start deep in the field in that 36 machine, but it looks like they got things sorted out. One driver going to the back of the field for unapproved adjustments, and that's the 19 of Glenn Styers, who is already at the back of the field, so you might as well take a couple of swings at that race car. Glenn Styers recently elected into the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame, a great sprint car racer, a great track owner, and now he's going to try his hat at the NASCAR Pinty Series. It's been a while since he's been on pavement, so we'll see what he can do. Big learning curve in practice, especially a track you've never been on, a car you've never been in, so a lot of learning for stars here this afternoon. He's done so many races in so many places, he actually can't remember if he's raced here before, but Ironically, uh, back in the day when he was racing late models, he put Paul Mathers in his car. I know at Delaware or at Cayuga Speedway, it's possibly did the same thing here at Delaware Speedway. The car saw some great success there, but he'll get this figured out. He's got two races to do it here this afternoon to try to try to learn what he can with the NASCAR Pinty Series, making his first and second career starts here this afternoon. Race fans, at this time, it's my pleasure to welcome Dave Lloyd from Quick Quick Firestarters, his guests, Mark and Tim Burnswell, the Caveman Contest winners, and Jeff and Jason, Quick Quick Distributors, to give the words we've all been waiting for. Drivers, fire them up! I like it. That's, that's a witty take. That's fantastic. These guys just think Burnswell, fire them up. They've thought of everything. 
they, they, they've seen every angle and they've approached it from all of those. We're so lucky up here. Uh, Tony Spateri is here, Jen Booth from, from Pinty's and all of their guests. Quick, quick fire starters and all their guests. We have got phenomenal partners here in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Uh, I know WeatherTech was on their way. They had other commitments, but they were getting down here as quick as they could to support their driver, LP Dumoulin. Uh, it's always amazing to see these sponsors get engaged. Let's also give a special welcome to Rigid and Ryobi. Sponsors on the 61 of Brent Weller. Uh, he's made his first starts ever in the series this season. That team's always got smiles on their faces. They're, they're learning a lot. It is a steep learning curve, but that's a great-looking race car. Absolutely fantastic. Weller coming up out of the sportsman division here in Ontario. Started his career in the mini stocks uh, out of Flamborough Speedway, so worked his way up the ladder. Now uh, feels it's time to make the jump to the NASCAR Pinty Series here in 2021, and a great-looking Don. She'll be behind the wheel of starting deep in the field, but we'll see what he can do at the end of this one. Race fans, we'd like you to help us out just a little bit. This is the last time those pit crews up and down pit road will be able to hear you before the roar of these race cars. Let's give them a round of applause. Give them a hoot. Give them a holler. These teams have crossed Ontario and Quebec. They have endured long days, long nights, tireless efforts. They've been sweaty. They've been bloody. They do what it takes to keep their cars on the track, and they deserve all the appreciation we can throw at them. And you would think just because the series wasn't racing yesterday, those teams, some of them went back to their home bases, they were local, some found a rented shop. A lot of teams spent all day Saturday working on these race cars to get them turned around after Friday night, make the adjustments they needed to make, make the repairs. I talked to the... Uh, that Hackinson Racing Team, they were putting body panels back on. The rear bumper cover is missing off of uh, Shea Gemmel's North Country Property Minutes number 8 machine. So the teams had a lot of work to do to make sure these cars were in tip-top shape to be here again on this Sunday afternoon. It, it is a lot of work, and the teams don't give up. And I, I heard from a bunch of teams who said, man, that was a really good show last night. That APC Late Model Championship, we watched it from the hotel. You know, they work all day long. <laughs> they just want a comfortable bed. They want a shower. But they're still race fans. That they're all racer 100 percent And this is gonna be a fun afternoon. 125 laps the distance. If you're just joining us, let's recap. On Friday night, Trayton Lapsovich took the white flag. He was leading the way. It looked as though he was gonna score his first victory in the NASCAR Pinty series. He led down the back straightaway, down into turn number three, and it was DJ Kennington who, who he wanted it. He drove in. Contact was made. It was a it was a bump and run. There's no other way to say it. Trayton Lapsovich slid up the racetrack. DJ Kennington slides through to take the checkered flag and the victory. Much to the thrill of the crowd, who seemed to be partial to that St. Thomas, Ontario driver. Funny how that works. The former Delaware Speedway regular getting all the hometown love. We'll see what Kennington can do here, starting on the outside of the front row. Again. He's closing that points gap, 26 points out of Alex Tagliani. He's got the advantage right now over everyone in front of him, starting ahead of Andrew Ranger, LP Dumlin, and Alex Tagliani. Kennington going to have the advantage for that Castrol Dodge. See what he can do from the front row. He's going to have Trayton Lapsovich on his inside. The quick, quick RGC Sports number 20 machine. The young man picked up his first career APC United Late Model Series win last night here at Delaware Speedway. It's been a long time coming, so we'll see what they can do. Lapsovich, I talked to Fuzz. Trayton's father, Jeff, this afternoon, he said they didn't think it was ever going to come at the APC United Late Mall Series, so we'll see if it comes a little quicker here with the NASCAR Pinty Series this afternoon. New track record for the number 20 machine, the Quick Quick RGC Sports number 20 ride starting on the front row. He's really come of age this season, and it's been great to watch. It, it reminds me of the start of DJ Kennington's career where he had a ton of second place finishes before he came a perennial winner. But race fans, it is time to go. The quick, quick fire starter, 125, going to go green at a turn number four. Lapsovich in the number 20, DJ Kennington in the 17. They like the wick and we're underway. Lapsovich with the advantage down in turn number one. Kennington trying to slide in line. Alex Gannett there. Kennington with the run on the high side down the back straightaway. The 17 machine now able to clear Gannett. Here comes Brandon Watson on the outside. And the Leland Industries number 64 machine working to the outside. The Gannett's number 52 ride trying to take the third spot away. Lapsovich to lead him back to the stripe to lead lap number one. Takes a few laps for these general tires to come up to temperature. 
You see the car sliding around on the racetrack. Alex Connect going to clear the 64 of Brandon Watson. Further back problems again for Cole Powell in the number 36. The team had, had water in the fuel system. They thought they got it all out. They drained the entire system, drained the carburetor, drained everything they possibly could. That car has again shut off down the front straightaway. The number 36 machine slow down around the bottom of the racetrack. We'll see if he can make it back to pit road or if we'll need to caution out on the racetrack. Very slowly through turn number two, but out in front it continues to be Trayton Lapsovich. They're three wide on the front straightaway. All Quebec drivers, Andrew Ranger on the inside, Mark Antoine Cameron in the middle. Kevin Lacroix up on the high side, and he is going to lose a handful of spots as he rubs up against the wall on the exit of turn two. Not a lot of room off of two and down the back straightaway. The bumper to bumper 74 machine falling back still up on the high side of the racetrack. Continues to lose positions. And yellow flag is out now for the 36 of Cole Powell. He has come to rest just to the bottom side of turn number three, and that will draw our first caution in the afternoon here in the Quick Wick 125. Slight difference in the way the NASCAR Pinty Series races are scored. Unlike what we saw last night, yellow flag laps not counting. In the NASCAR Pinty Series, every lap on the racetrack counts. So these laps starting to count. Powell already getting the push back to pit road from the uh, cleanup crew here at Delaware Speedway. They're going to get him back to pit road to the attention of the team. They're going to go to work, but it might be something they have to dig deeper on to try to make it back up for the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150 later on this afternoon. We'll see what they can do going to work, getting that car back to pit road. And uh, good stuff, Cole Powell now on pit road. Guy I was watching earlier was that 74 of Kevin Lacroix really having a tough time being loose off the corners. And you saw he kept getting in the outside lane, and that's where he lost a pile of spots off turn two when he was in that three wide. But that all began down in turn four when he couldn't keep it uh keep it to the low side of the track and open up that bottom door we welcome jamie monsley to the broadcast the voice here of delaware speedway what an unfortunate set of circumstances for cole powell i mean he has run for the points championship before in the nascar pinty series but this season was not one of those times where he's attempted to take home the title uh only doing a little bit of barnstorming great to see him here on this final weekend but all he was here to do was to try to win races. Well, he had a good season here at Delaware Speedway in the weekly pro lay model division where he finished third in points, just f or fourth in points, just three points back of the eventual winner, uh, Jake Sheridan. And he did probably have the, the best performance in the King of the Hill, or at least had the fans on their feet the most with all the burnouts he was doing in that BMW. <laughs> he did look like he had a little bit of fun there. I mean, he didn't run worth the darn in the King of the Hill races. And, and, and if you aren't familiar, King of the Hill is when spectators normally bring their street cars into the track and, the, and they race head to head. It's one on one, uh, two street cars on the track at the same time for a one lap shootout. And generally it gets pretty hairy and the fans get riled up and it's all sorts of fun. And Jamie, you did a great job of calling the action. Uh, it's a blast. It's a blast. Uh, I call it the bloodthirsty factor because you know everybody here is just wanting somebody to put their streetcar in the wall at some point. But uh, everybody kept it clean and green today. It uh, ended up being a viper from Hamilton going to victory lane in the King of the Hill tonight. It's the old expression, come out and test your nerves and your insurance policy. But uh, no one needed to test their insurance policy here this afternoon. Everyone kept it a clean in King of the Hill. Field oh. given the sign to double back up. It always makes you nervous when a guy comes in with a license plate on the car. Yeah, you can see some some trickery there. Dylan Sharp, though, he, he's a drifter. Dylan Sharp, he races, I believe, mini stocks or pure stocks over at Flamborough. He's also a drifter. And today he picked up some cash in King of the Hill. Mike Hennick, the pace car driver for the NASCAR Pinty Series, keeps the field slow in behind. He will peel off onto pit road and leave the field in the hands of Trayton Lapsovich in the 20. DJ Kennington in the 17. Green flag is out. We're underway once again. Great launch for laps of it down the bottom side of the racetrack. Trying to clear the 17 of Kennington. Kennington able to slide in line now. Connect down at the bottom. Going to take over the third spot. Brandon Watson trying to battle back up on the high side. The lead in the trees. NTM bearing 64 machine. He'll slide in line. 
just in front of Kevin Lacroix, the bumper to bumper 74 machine, trying to charge back up after, after losing some positions. Andrew Ranger looked at the inside down the front straightaway, fell back in line behind Lacroix. That yellow flag worked out very well for Kevin Lacroix. He had lost all these spots, the lap leading up to the yellow, but because they go back for scoring to the last completed lap to set the order for the restart, Kevin Lacroix made back about four spots on the racetrack, so that was a big break for the driver of the 74, and now he's got that car glued to the inside lane. He's not going to give up the bottom groove very easily. You see, he's still struggling, struggling to find forward bite off the bottom of that corner. That car, I'm sure, he's fighting a loose condition. You can see as he wheels it out of the corner, he just wants to slide on him. The other driver I've been watching on the, the start and the restart is our points leader, the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Back in a part of the, the pack where you just don't want to be for these restarts. It gets hairy. There's chain reaction incidents. What he needs to do more so than anything is have two clean races today. And it's much harder to do from where he's starting that deep in the field. Well, he's up to 13th now. He's getting one spot from where he started in 14th. Trying to work his way forward, but he's got a big gap ahead of him to try to close in on the pack of cars just out of him. Shea Gemmel, the next car in line for the 18 of Alex Tagliani. Here comes Brandon Watson for the inside of Alex Gannett in that 64 machine down the front straightaway. Didn't have enough of a run, slid back in line behind Gannett. Puts a little bit of a bumper to him that time through two and down the back straightaway. Brandon Watson trying to move forward in that 64. Subbing for Mark Dilley here this afternoon. Again, gets the run in the middle of three and four. Puts the bumper to the back of the 52 machine, unable to root him up off the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, Mark Dilley struggling with some back pain. He's got some sort of issue going on. Decided it was best if he didn't get behind the wheel. So Brandon Watson will play the part here this afternoon. A young talent from Stainer, Ontario. A gifted late model racer. And he's got a good run to the inside of Alex Gannett off of turn number four. And in the one they work, Gannett on the high side. It's the 64 of Watson on the bottom. And Watson will make the pass. The other guy I really want to keep my eye on tonight is that uh, North Country property maintenance number eight of Shea Gemmel. He got spun out early on Friday, but man, did he rally. Raced all the way back without a lot of cautions to a sixth-place finish. And he's looking pretty racy here today working on Dexter Stacy. A lot of laps around Delaware Speedway for Shea Gemmel, the former Super Stock regular out here. Has uh, now been running the last few years of the APC United Late Model Series. And this will be his third start this year, third or fourth start with the uh, NASCAR Pinty Series getting his uh, his feet wet here. But they don't the front this number eight machine. Just running behind his teammate Dexter Stacey in the 92 machine as they try to work their way through traffic. Donald Teague with a run to the inside of Mark. Antoine Cameron, that 22 machine. Cameron with the advantage on the high side. Unable to close the door down the back straightaway. A little bit of contact up the hill goes Cameron. Here comes Teague in that number 80 machine to the bottom side of the racetrack. Trying to take the spot away from Mark Antoine Cameron while he's up on the high side in the 22 ride. The other driver this afternoon trying to win a championship is that 47 of LP Dumlin. He runs right now in the seventh position, so not where he wants to be, but he is in a position to gain a lot of points of, on Alex Tagliani. If there's one thing Tagliani is doing right now that's probably good, it's being all by himself on the racetrack. So he's not in any situations that could cause him too much trouble. But this battle we're watching between Shea Gemmel and Mark Antoine Cameron, that's a battle for the 11th spot. And you can see it's getting contentious out there. That happens right in front of Alex Tagliani. He's got to have razor sharp reflexes to not get himself into a lot of trouble. And he's probably happy to see that the eight getting away from the 22 car. So less contact now between those two as Tagliani tries to close in on them. And running in the 13th spot, trying to close in on 12th place Mark Antoine Cameron. Don't look now, but Brandon Watson back there in the third spot. He is closing in on this race for the lead. It's about to be a three-car battle at the front of the pack. Laps are so out front. Hasn't been able to shake DJ Kennington in that 17 machine. The Spark Power Corporation 17 ride. Staying about a car length. Oh, back trouble. Off bumper. We got Brent Weller around in the rigid Ryobi Queensway Truck Center number 61 machine. He's facing up towards the outside retaining wall able to get that car refired and moving once again doesn't look like he made any contact but he has lost a lap now back end of that car looks to be squatting down just a little bit yeah flat right rear tire what a uh what a shame brent weller i just noticed had advanced a number of positions he's trying to impress his 
partners here at the races, Rigid and Ryobi, doing a fantastic job. So he's going to head down to the pits to the attention of his crew chief, Kevin Gallant. They should have an easy enough time replacing that right rear tire. Team already ready. Got the jack on the wall tire. They're all ready to go. For whether well, to get that 61 machine down to pit road, the attention of the crew. You see the 36 of LeBay, or Cole Powell still on pit road. Uh, looks like the team not able to get that car to go going again to rejoin here with a quick quick 125. Well, they're down pit road now. The crew going over the wall. And, and at this point, if you're Cole Powell, you're looking to rebound for the second race of the afternoon. The Pinties Fall Brawl, 150 lapper a little bit later on. So they managed to get the jack under the right side of that 61 machine. They're going to have to raise it up quite a bit. The flat tire will come off real easy, but trying to get the inflated tire back on, you need a little bit more room. The pace car is in turn number three, so they've got to get those lug nuts on quickly. That looks like NASCAR official, maybe Doug Gonder overseeing the pit stop. You can see crew chief Kevin Gallant, he's on top of the wall, or, or he's just that tall. He's behind the wall standing on the ground as they go to work on the right rear. So. Brent Weller has lost a second lap. And we see Larry Jackson, the firefighter from Oakville, Ontario, sponsored by O'Neill Electric Supply. He'll head down to Pitt Road where they're double fisting on the back of that car. They're, they're adjusting both sides. They're going right to work. Again, we, we mentioned earlier, Jackson uh, had issues to open practice. They had a fuel pickup issue and lost uh, the first 25 minutes of practice. They only got the last 20 minutes of practice this afternoon. And then had a, uh, a scary moment in qualifying. That car darted up the hill into turn number one. Was able to redeem himself with a, with a half-decent lap number two. But threw away lap number one with that car not handling. So the team trying to make up for what they lost in practice this afternoon. Trying to make adjustments on the fly to get Action Larry Jackson to move through the field. That O'Neill Electric Supply Milwaukee Tools number 84 machine. He was as high as seventh place in the point standings this season. And he was really excited because they were coming home for two races at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Then to his home track, Flamborough Speedway, and then, of course, here to Delaware Speedway, where it seemed uh, he had nowhere to go but up. They were all comfortable places for him, and he has just had horrible luck in those events. So once again, we're going to go back to green. A little bit of a change this time in row number two. It's Brandon Watson going to restart from the third spot, so he'll be trying to keep that nose to the inside of DJ Kennington. Maybe steal a position here as we get back underway. Trayton Lapsovich stomps on the throttle. We're back under green. Down in the turn number one. Lapsovich able to clear Kennington. Here comes Brandon Watson to the inside. The Spark Power Corp 17 machine up on the high side of the racetrack. Brandon Watson down low. The NTM bearings. Leland, number 64 machine, trying to take the second spot away from DJ Kennington. Kennington, your winner Friday night. Comes in today fourth in points, trying to close the gap. He's going to lose the spot to Brandon Watson. Slide back to the third position. He'll slide in line just ahead of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix runs in fourth and now LP Dumoulin in the 47 up to the fifth spot. That was a good restart for Dumoulin, the driver of the number 47 WeatherTech entry. Picked up a couple of spots, gets into the top five. We look back to Alex Tagliani in the 18. He's battling with Mark Antoine Cameron and right behind him is a driver who slid backwards at the drop of the green. That's Pete Shepard from London, Ontario in that APC number seven. So Tagliani trying to improve some positions here as we're 30 laps into the quick, quick fire starter 125. Tagliani down the bottom side of the racetrack trying to move up to the 12 spot. Cameron with the advantage and the momentum down the front straightaway. He will take the spot away. Cars racing side by side just ahead of them though. Here comes Pete Shepard the third now looking to the inside of Tagliani down the back straightaway. Tagliani slams the door shut trying to hold on to the spot. Tagliani on defense trying to move forward and hold on to the points lead. So far struggling here this afternoon. The APC can use the number seven machine again. Looks to the bottom side of the racetrack. Not enough daylight to stick the nose of that Ford Fusion to the inside of the 18 machine. He'll try it again down the back straightaway. Your point leader is getting uh, beat around back there as Shepard working on the 18 of Tagliani and here comes Petey Shepard to get the spot out of turn four. He moved Tagliani off turn two to get it. And here comes Sam Fellows, the 98 machine to the bottom side of the racetrack. Tagliani back now to 14th where he started the race and looking to lose more Mike uh, Strawn in the 56 machine. And the R Club ride looked to the bottom side of the racetrack down the back straightaway, didn't have enough of a run. And Tagliani able to slam the door shut that seat. He bear number 18 machine. Yeah, that is not the part of the field where Alex Tagliani wants to be playing deep in this one, at back in the 15th position. 
So really, LP Dumoulin, he's in a perfect spot right now, running in fifth, having a solid run. And for drivers like DJ Kennington and Andrew Ranger with an outside shot at a title hope, they've got to do a little bit better for DJ Kennington. He's got to basically win out three races here this weekend. He needs to take them all. And Alex Tagliani is going farther backwards. Strong gets by Larry Jackson going by Brent Weller. He is laps down. So they are not on the same lap, but still Tagliani has been passed by almost everybody on the racetrack. You have to wonder something has gone away on that 18 machine. That car not handling anywhere near as well as it did at the start of the race and just free falling through the field now. He's got a bit of a gap to try to get back to hitting his marks and see if he can diagnose what's wrong with the car and report back to the crew, maybe get a caution. He won't lose too much ground at this point in time for where he's running. If they can get a caution, come in and make the adjustments they need to on that Rona number 18 machine. But Jake, Jake Emmel in the number eight, Donald Teague in the 80. They put Andrew Ranger back a couple of positions. Andrew Ranger, like we said, he needs to get up there. He needs to finish on the podium to have any kind of hope. But a driver who is going in the right direction is LP Dumoulin in that 47 machine. Looking racy right behind the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. That's a battle for fourth as Lacroix gets up off the bottom of the racetrack. LP tries to fire to the inside. Oh, uh, Lacroix still fighting that loose condition on that 74. You can see now he's loose in, loose through the middle, and loose off. And that could open the door up for Dumoulin. He's trying to keep it pinned on the bottom. Having a tough time manhandling that 74. Laps are still out front. Brandon Watson in second has started to pull away from DJ Kennington. We got trouble on the racetrack. Looks like Pete Shepard slow and headed to pit road. Here comes the APC can use that number seven machine. Down pit road to the attention of the crew. The second Dave Jacobs car going to hit pit road. The team ready to go over the wall with the jack, but they're not really sure what to do. They're going to go in the window and discuss with Pete Shepard the third what's wrong. They're trying to figure out what's wrong. It looks like it might be a soft right front tire. That tire not as um, as inflated as the right rear. So Shepard might have known something was going wrong, but not able to pinpoint exactly what it was until the crew got a look at it. Yeah, and that's a good eye, Brandon. You could see that the general tire logo was kind of compressed there. And a little bit different than what the right rear looked like, so they're going to change that right front tire. But there go any hopes Pete Shepard in that number seven hat of success here this afternoon. Lap traffic now for the race leaders. Trayton Lapsovich goes to the outside of Glenn Styers. New inductee into the Canadian Motorsports Hall of Fame, but it's certainly not for his prowess behind the wheel of an asphalt lake model. It's for his dirt sprint car talent and success on the racetrack on dirt. He's trying his hand at the NASCAR Pinty Series behind the wheel of that number 19. The battle for the fist bump got heated up there for a moment. LP Dillon was on the defense from Brett Taylor in that number three machine. The Fast Eddie race for a three ride. Was uh, knocking on the back door, trying to find a way by Dumoulin for the fifth spot. Dumoulin able to get a little bit of breathing room, but they're going to come up on lap traffic. Stars from Imano just ahead of the, the Traw, Dumoulin, and Taylor, as they're going to have to go to the outside of these cars down the front straightaway. There are two big moments about to happen. One of them, Alex Tagliani has just gone a lap down to race leader Trayton Lapsovich. The second big moment is going to happen when Trayton Lapsovich puts another car a lap down. So Alex Tagliani, one lap down, should a yellow come out, he would get the free pass to get back on the lead lap. Should one more car get overtaken by the race leader and be put a lap down, that really puts Tagliani in a tough, tough position to finish out this race. Battle for the sixth spot. Shea Gemmel made the move to the inside of Brett Taylor, tried to, and was able to squeeze up before they got to the lap car, TJ Reed Amato, and take over the spot. Taylor now up on the high side. He loses a couple more spots. Donald T gets through, Andrew Ranger as well, and it's not over yet. Here comes his teammate Dexter Stacy in the Bullies Truck Stop 92 machine to the inside. Taylor fighting a loose race car, got trapped up on the high side through lap traffic, and around goes Dexter Stacy. The 92 might have had a little bit of help there as he went around down into turn number three. And we just mentioned who he was racing. We'll have to wait to see if there's a replay of it. But we're pretty sure we can uh, determine what happened there. Dexter Stacy gets going very quickly, remains on the lead lap. I mean, that's a veteran move by the young man from Kahnawake, Quebec. Car got around backwards, but he was able to get it refired and get it rolling before race leader Trayton Lapsovich could close in. Let's have a look at this replay down into turn number three. Things got hairy. And it, if he did get contact it was from his teammate 
the number three of Brent Taylor. It was hard to tell as that was just out of frame as they came in, but those two cars were racing for position and they, things got a little bit jostled as they tried to work their way through lap traffic. Everybody trying to get to the preferred lane. I think you just can't quite see it on what happened in frame, but Taylor uh, up in the second group of the racetrack. Maybe this will show it. Yeah, yeah. Taylor was a little bit higher on the track than was Dexter Stacy, but definitely contact was made. Just, just a little bit, just at the wrong time. Just as you get on the brakes into the corner, you kind of get into the bumps just a little bit and upset the car. And that's all it took for Dexter Stacy to be facing the wrong way. But good news for him, able to get that car refired and moving again. He'll stay on the lead lap and keep fighting his way through this one. And, and what an event this weekend. What a crowd at Delaware Speedway. The biggest crowd ever put together for the NASCAR Pinty Series finale. And I, and I know this... Brennan, because I've announced all of them since the inception of the series in 2006. And is this ever exciting? I mean, Canadian racing is in great, great shape. It's great to see so many people out at the racetrack. I mean, you look down towards turn number four, you see the grassy hill, just people everywhere, lawn chairs. We got the suite set up. And then you look down along the front straightaway, the grandstands are packed. Anywhere that there's a, an umbrella, somewhere to lean, people are, people are taking in the racing. And here comes the 18 machine to take away any down pit road. As I suspected, they would try to take advantage of a caution. Well, right, but he should have been the free pass recipient and got his lap back. Instead, he gives that up to come to pit road. But are they changing a front tire? Or are they just adjusting air pressures? They've lifted that car up in the air. I guess what we would look for is to see if they're going to take spring rubber out or put spring rubber in. Not seeing any big adjustments. Like they're going to go over to the no. Nope. Thought they were going to go over to the left side and do some work, but they did not. Just looked like some tire pressure adjustments on the right side. I didn't see any anyone reaching in, trying to pull a spring rubber, anything out on the right side to make me think they made a major adjustment on that car. So. And, and he'll close back in on the field with Alex Tagliani. So his spotter, Colin, Colin Livingston, this is where communication is key because if he wanted to come back into the pits, he's got to close back in on the on the pack so you get as much time as you can. Right now, Alex Tagliani is half a lot behind the pace car for where he's running in the pack. So, so the crew has to go to work quickly and decisively to do whatever it is they want to do on pit road. But Alex Tagliani is deep in this field he needs for some misfortune to fall upon the 47 of LP Dumoulin if he wants to keep the points lead leaving this race. Although it looks like they're getting ready to come in again. The pit sign is back out for Tagliani, and he has dropped to the inside of turn number three to head to pit road. So it looks like the team maybe came down, evaluated the situation, and tried to look at what they wanted to adjust, maybe took a reading on those tire pressures, and reported back to crew chief Paul Genioli Jr. to see what they want to do with the 18 car. So Tagliani coming back down pit road, the crew on the wall, ready to go to see what they can do to the Viagra Rona St. Hubert number 18 machine. It's been a struggle for those guys all weekend, Adam. You know, they come in as the point leader, and uh, and they just weren't, they didn't have speed Friday night, and they're struggling again today. So tough, tough weekend for Alex Tagliani. As they lift the hood on that 18 machine, I wonder if an adjustment's being made in there or if they were looking to make sure the sway bar is still attached. There, there's a lot of things that can that can go wrong, get unhooked on these race cars. The crew is even over there looking at the attitude of the car, the way it sits on the ground to make sure nothing has fallen out of adjustment. But Alex Tagliani, you know this will be frustrating for that driver. So I know earlier this afternoon after practice, I was down there, they had a small power steering leak on that car. So maybe that has come to fruition. They did change a steering box before qualifying, before the cars got impounded, to try to make sure that they had everything top notch. So maybe the power steering has gone, gone away on the AT machine, and he's on just hanging on for what he's worth to, to keep that car muscled around this racetrack. So we are already 53 laps in, 54 laps in, to the quick, quick fire starters 125. It's about a 72 lap sprint to the finish from here. Trayton Lapsovich continues to lead with the 64 of Brandon Watson on the outside. Good start for Watson. He keeps pace. DJ Kennington lags back just a little bit as they come to green. These two dueled it out for the points championship of the APC United Late Model Series. It was Watson coming out on the top, but this battle on the racetrack right now, Lapsovich back to the point. Watson to second. DJ Kennington gets to the bottom, gets to the third spot. 
And here comes LP Dumoulin now to the inside of Kevin LaCroix, the bumper to bumper 74 machine up on the high side of the racetrack where he's had his struggle so far this afternoon. Dumoulin trying to get that WeatherTech 47 car to turn down on the bottom of the racetrack. Great run down out of two and down the back straight away. Guys, what I want to know, every time we've talked about Kevin Lacroix, we've talked about how badly his car is handling, but here he is battling for the fourth spot on his restart. It's amazing how a bad day can be different depending on who you are as Lacroix gets sideways down into turn one. I think what's really going to show in that 74 car is when we continue further in the race, if he's wore that right rear off, but Right now, a battle up front for the lead. Brandon Watson putting pressure on Lapsovich down into one. And that was a big moment for Lacroix off a two and down the back straightaway. He got up into the outside wall again, and that car got the right sides off the ground and back down. And now he's uh, in a battle with Andrew Ranger. Ranger to the inside of the inside of the num number 74 machine as Lacroix up on the high side trying to hold on to the hold on to the position. Yeah, he's really struggling with that handle up off the corner and I'll tell you a little further back Brett Taylor just had some contact with the 52 of Alex Gannett. I can't imagine Gannett will be real thrilled with how that went down so we'll keep an eye on those drivers and how about Sam Fellows in the 98? I mean he we don't expect a lot out of Sam Fellows on these oval tracks, but man, he is right there in the mix of things, looking to race his way towards the top 10. He's running in the 12th spot. Guys, up, up, up near the front of the pack, watch Shea Gemmel as well. He was just putting the heat on LP Dumoulin. As now we look back out to our leader, but Shea Gemmel again, had that great run Friday night and keeping it rolling here today. Watson is starting to apply the pressure to the quick quick 20 machine of Trayton Lapswitch at the front of the field. Lapswitch now with just a little bit of breathing room. A little more than he had about a lap or so ago when Watson was knocked in on the rear bumper of the 20 machine. Brandon Watson might say it's go time now. The Intan bearing Leland 64 machine. We got trouble for the quad. The bumper to bumper 74 machine. Slow down the back straightaway. He'll peel the inside of the racetrack and he'll hit pit road. This time down the front straightaway to the 74 car. We had to wonder if the damage done when he got up into the outside retaining wall. And that was not the first time he did it off of turn number two this race. You can see the white on those tires as he hit pit road. The crew not jumping over the wall as fast as you would think they would want to but they might uh, they might call this one done and just start making repairs for uh, race number two it looked to me like a lot of brake dust coming out from underneath that 74 machine as he rolled into the pits crew chief don thompson jr is on the radio on top of the pit box nobody on the crew is really left to action i don't think they're sure what needs to be done down there so some heavy damage, obviously. You can tell by the whites on the side of the tires that he definitely hit the concrete hard enough to be back. Oh, yeah, he was airborne. Now, Don Thompson Jr. over the wall, no fire suit, no helmet. That's a no-no in the NASCAR world. Where's the nearest NASCAR? Now the NASCAR official's pointing. Man, that's not supposed to happen. What do you have going on? Thompson saying, get that driver back on the racetrack. So Donnie Thompson taking matters into his own hands. And they just put a massive amount of turns in the right rear. I couldn't tell whether it was on the track bar or whether it was on the spring pocket, but, but when you take that many turns, something's amiss on the car. Well, Don Thompson Jr. knows we've got two races here this afternoon. There is not much of a break between race number one and race number two. So even if you know this race has been given away, you still have to go out there and try to improve on the car, try to learn what the car is going to do. So he'll make that adjustment, get his driver back on track. Meanwhile, at the front, it continues to be Trayton Lapsovich leading the way with Brandon Watson applying the pressure. DJ Kennington is not falling back any more than six, seven car lengths from this battle for the lead. And it's Castrol Edge, number 17. Lapsovich out in front. Watson has been a little bit quicker in the last few laps. That time by Lapsovich with the advantage over Watson, starting to pull away once again. So you have to wonder if Watson may be trying to cool those tires down, heat them up too much, trying to make a run. Lapsovich in the front of the field. Kennington trying to close back in on the front two in that 17 machine. See what he can do in the castle edge dodge. Jay Gemmel with a great run so far. Most of the problem with the machine up to the fourth spot. And looking for more, trying to close the gap to the front three as they're almost a uh, half straightaway out in front of him as they travel down the back straightaway. Guys, obviously with Lacroix and all those adjustments trying to get the car faster, there's another hidden thing behind it, and that's the pure fact that if he can go out there and rip a fast lap or get fast laps here late, that's going to determine the starting position for race number two is by who turns the fastest lap here in race number one. So importantly, they get him back out there, try to get that car fixed to try to run a heater. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. As we just watched Brent Weller get all sorts of sideways down in turn number two, made a nice save to keep control of that rigid number 61. Out in front, race leader Trayton Lapsovich about to encounter some lap traffic in Glenn Styers in the number 19 and TJ Renamato in the number two. The, these two cars have been near each other all day, it seems. Glenn Styers in the black 19, TJ Renamato in the black number two, and he'll step up to that outside groove to get out of the way of the race leader. It's time for the sportsman-like move to over the high into turn number one. Let the leaders go by. Renamato does the same thing down the back straightaway into turn number three and move up, let Lapsovich go. Here comes Graham Watson, the 64 machine, the teammate to the two, down to the bottom side of the racetrack. Green Amato now a lap down to the, to the leaders. Kennington trying to close in as they work through lap traffic and that 17 machine, unable to close the gap to the front two. Lapsovich has turned it up and started pulling away from the 64, Brandon Watson. And they've both pulled away from the 17 at DJ Kennington. So Kennington losing, losing his grip on the top three there as he's gonna fall back to the clutches of Shea Gemmel in the number eight who He's just gone to the inside of Glenn Styers. If you're Gemmel at this point, you're going to be wanting to caution. You know how good the car is. And as I say that, there it is. Kevin LaPont looks like Sam Fellows, the 98 machine. Both those cars facing the wrong way down into turn number one. Damage on the front end of Sam Fellows, 98 machine. Attaboy, Sam. Back at Icar in Mirabelle. Uh, Sam Fellows got spun around and he was nearly a lap down and he was very polite with the car He let the leaders go by before he refired and got going again But what you learn in this racing is you, you have to keep going in fact here I'll be surprised if he stops in his pit stall What they should do is wave him out to get him ahead of the pace car. No, they're gonna go straight to work and that, and that's knowing this series, knowing what's going on. As we have a look at the replay, I believe it's going to be right at the bottom of the screen here as they go for a synchronized spin as Kevin Lacroix and Sam Fellows make contact. But Fellows having a great run. He was running in the 11th spot. He is, he's now lost a lap, but as long as that steering wheel is still pointed in the right direction, as long as he hasn't affected the alignment in the front end, he should be just fine. These cars are pretty durable. Yeah, I spoke with uh, with Sam this afternoon. Just getting acquainted to these ovals. It's not something he's he's got. And with road course racing, you, you maybe move around a little bit more than you do here. Here is just you're looking for the, the rubber strip. You're looking for the fast way around the racetrack. Maybe on a road course, you're gonna you're gonna move it up. You're gonna change it up just a little bit on some corners, depending on where the rubber's laid down and and where everyone's running on the racetrack. But just getting used to hitting your marks lap after lap here and finding the fast way around and. And here we're going to see a little bit of savvy. Sam Fellows just picking up a few hundred RPM. And even Amy, no, that's not Amy at that end of pit road with the stop and go sign. Although maybe it is. Normally she's at pit entrance telling you whether the pits are open or closed. Says, hey, speed it up. Get out ahead of the pace car. And that's a big break as Sam Fellows only one lap down. Trayton Lapsovich has completed 77 laps. Sam Fellows has completed 76 laps. So his, his race is not lost. He needs a yellow, he needs a free pass, and Sam Fellows could find himself back in the mix. The other driver who's finding himself back in the mix, the 18 of Alex Tagliani, this time he's not going to come to the pits. He is going to take that free pass and get himself back on the lead lap. So Tagliani seems to be staying on the racetrack, so maybe the team has figured out what is wrong with the car, and at this point in time, just trying to make up what they can and get through this one and then go to work and make whatever repairs they need to do for race number two the pinty's fall brawl 150 that will come up about a half hour the conclusion of this one larry jackson pulling off a bit road after getting some service down on his number 84 same with T.J. Renamato and the two machine, likely making some adjustments, trying to get that driver a little more comfortable behind the wheel. This race has been everything we had hoped it would be. All the storylines are there. D.J. Kennington has to make up a lot of ground. L.P. Dumoulin has to make up a bit of ground. Dumoulin, you can rest assured Dumoulin wants to be a little closer to the front than that WeatherTech number 47, but in the big picture, he's doing what he needs to do to try and earn yet another NASCAR Penny Series champion. He knows what it takes. So he'll most likely move ahead of Tagliani at the end of this one, the way they're running right now, if it were to finish, and he's going to 
Also, he's going to lose a little bit of ground to DJ Kennington. So Kennington's going to close the gap. So th it's going to shuffle things up just a little bit here. But you're going to have to wonder how aggressive is Kennington going to be on this restart. Down the bottom side of the racetrack, he's going to try to do what he has to do to keep Brandon Watson up on, the, up on that second lane and try to take the position and follow Lasovich through and get back to the second spot. Maybe Kennington was waiting for this caution. Maybe he was riding around trying to save his stuff for this moment. 80 laps now complete. Yeah, Kennington missed on that last restart. He, he fell behind a few car lengths. That allowed Brandon Watson to get in line. But just before this yellow flag, Kennington had lost contact with that lead group. He had lost a number of car lengths. So we'll see if Shea Gamble, he might be looking to pounce and gain positions on the outside. We're going to find out because the base car will peel off the inside of turn number four. Leave the field in control of flagman Dan Hawkins and race leader Trayton Lapsovich. Side by side, a great drag race down the front straight away into turn number one. Last week is a little loose down on the bottom. Watson with the advantage on the high side, down the back straightaway. Here comes the NTN Leland 64 machine out in front. Last of it tries to fire back to the inside. Watson trying to slam the door shut. Takes the lane away through three and four. Watson will be your leader back at the line. Here comes Shea Gemmel, three wide on the high side of the racetrack. He'll go to the second spot. What a move by Gemmel from the uh, top four right to the bottom. Close the door. It looks like something's amiss on that 20, guys. I gotta agree with you. It's just not getting into the corner the way it was. So Trayton Lapsovich and Andrew Ranger is all full of brakes trying to avoid him. You almost have to wonder if he's got maybe a right rear tire going down. I think that's what it what it is. That right rear tire looking a little bit down, and that's what he's having trouble with getting that car stepping out. And you can see it's starting to lean over on that right rear. So it might be a tire going away on the quick wick number 20 machine of Trayton Lapsovich. We've seen it a few times this race. Guys picking up debris out on the racetrack. And now it has come around and bit the 20 of Trayton last. We're trying to see that tire. That tire definitely down. And you can see, I wonder Ooh. if it was maybe contact on the restart if he came, got loose and came up into the 64 and maybe knocked the valve stem off that 20 machine. If you knock the valve stem off, it'll usually lose air very quickly. There it goes around right there. And that's oh, in front of Alex Tagliani. Tagliani, your points leader with nowhere to go but into the 20 of Lapsovich. And you, wow. can, you can see the, that right rear is soft, guys. I don't, yeah, yeah, it is. He's got to get on that loud pedal and spin around before the field gets there. Trayton Lasovich getting that car rolling in the wrong direction. In turn number four, he loses a lap. Alex Tagliani has lost a lap, but his problems might be bigger than that as Tagliani with the front end smashed in. He's got the, the front end smashed in. He's got the left rear as well. So you'll see it here. The car goes up the racetrack. Lapsovich finally unable to hold on to it. Depending where Tagliani hit Lapsovich, if he missed the left front tire of the Lapsovich number 20, Lapsovich may live to, to battle on. If he hit that left front tire, for sure it has caused suspension damage to the 20 machine. So Alex Tagliani. Now they do have a backup car, the 18 pit. I need, did see that behind the hauler. They might need it. So we have a look again, and, and Trayton was struggling with that soft tire, goes into the corner, gets the car woed up, and the, and the trouble was he was right in front of a pack of traffic. And you can see the, the Lapsovich, the right rear tire, all the markings gone off of that tire. So you had to wonder, maybe it was when the, they were three wide down the front straight with Gemmel up on the outside. The contact there started cutting the tire down, but I mean, Lapsovich was starting to fade back a little before that, so you really have to wonder, but they haven't pulled him into the pits yet. They've kept him out on the racetrack. What a move by Shea Gemmel, though, taking advantage of the situation and getting two, well, three for one at that time on the three wide maneuver and then quickly back to the bottom, tucked in the line behind Watson. And how about this? You got a guy looking for his first Pinty's race up front, a couple of them, actually. You're absolutely right. The top three have all been competitors this year in local late model action. Here they are at the front of this NASCAR Penny Series race. Some damage to the Malcolm Strong number 56 as well. As now the crew puts the hood up on the 18. They're going to have a look at the fundamentals in there. So the real problem is it's not the body damage. The air box is hanging down and dragging underneath. So in order to get that out, they're going to have to remove a lot of stuff. But I don't see a lot of urgency. So I think this one might be over for Alex Tagliani in the 18 machine. Trayton Lasovich now down pit road in the 20. You can clearly see the... That right rear tire being very soft. 
Tagliani out of the car, and he'll head back behind the pit box as they go to work on Lasovich's RGC Sports Quick Wick number 20 machine. And you can see in the background, Tagliani loosening the helmet. He'll pull that off. As the Lapsovich number 20 crew, they've got to get this right rear tire on. The field is approaching here down the front straightaway. Lugnut's going on. The jack goes down, but Lapsovich has stalled that car. He gets it running. And he runs the stop sign at the end of pit road. So I'm going to wager them. I'll tell you what, I disagree with the stop sign. They've been waving people on, saying hustle on through all day long. It was, but it was turned around pretty quick. We'll see what the officials decide. I mean, you have to think. I mean, it's it's one thing if they're rolling, but it's one thing if you're just coming off your pit pad. It's a, it's a judgment call there for the official at the end of pit road. Looks like the pace car made the button, made the hard left to pit road once again. Brandon Watson, your leader on the restart. He'll now have Shea Gemmel, the North Country property maintenance number eight machine, to his outside on the restart. They enter the restart zone. Watson puts the power down. Gemmel will slide in line ahead of Kennington and behind Watson down into turn number one. Brent Taylor got all sorts of sideways getting on the throttle on the front straightaway. Almost lost control of that number three. And boy, he spikes the brakes off of turn number two to avoid a problem. And now he'll do battle with LP Dumoulin in the 47. Brent Taylor might have a problem in that three machine. They tried to slam the door on Dumoulin down the box stretch, but Dumoulin already had his foot there. Now it looks like he's cleared him. Ranger now getting rolling on the high side in that 51. Looking to move up into fifth and take that spot away from J.P. Dumoulin. Dumoulin's going to want to try to get going here. If he's going to want to continue to build the points lead as Kennington is still ahead of him. And now cars sliding in line. Andrew Ranger going to slide in line behind the 47 of Dumoulin. Just ahead of Mark Antoine Cameron on the 22 machine. Tall Teague up on the high side of the racetrack. Trying to make, make some moves to get forward up on the high side. Hard to do here at Delaware Speedway, but trying to make it happen to the outside of Mark Antoine Cameron of the 22. Here comes Donald T. With 93 laps in the books, we look back towards the tail end of the lead lap. Oh, we got a spinner in three and one and two. Weller, Weller went around, and Jackson went with him. Rita Motto spun as well, and then you saw Glenn Styers loop it at the end. And, and this will open a bit of a can of worms. Malcolm Strawn in the 56 looked to be the top running car a lap down when that yellow flag came out. Now he has gone to pit road, which would leave Trayton Lapsovich in that spot. But I'm not sure if Trayton Lapsovich gets the free pass based on the fact that Malcolm Strawn had been in that position. So time will tell. So Larry Jackson down into the corner. He spun up to the high side. Brent Weller spun on the low side. Glenn Styers loops around just a bit too much rear brakes as he tried to get that car woed up. The plot thickens. I'll tell you, folks, when you have a double header like we have today, 125 laps here in the Quick Wick Firestarter 125, then the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150, we normally see the first race is a little bit more tame than the second because drivers know they've got to have something to play with. Uh, for the final event, but but we are not seeing that here today. I mean, this is it, right? The, the, you've got this, the Quick Quick 125, you got the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150, and that's it. it today is it. If you're going to make a charge of the points, today is your final stand. It's the last chance to do it. So everybody's trying to get every bit they can. And some of these drivers, again, Brandon Watson, Shake Gimmel up front, not chasing points, but they're here to make some noise. They're here to make a statement, and they both want to be standing in victory lane at the end of this one. So we've had some great runs so far out front. Our points have been shaken up just a little bit. Lapsovich moving up through the field. Looks like he will be the lucky dog here on the restart. So I'll put him back. TJ Arena model looks like he's going to have to head to pit road to get that rear bumper cover pulled off. That dragging behind the RGC Sports number two machine. And Brent Weller, there's no way he could see much of what was going on. He would have been looking out the left side window of that race car. And they were so excited. They've got a number of people here from Rigid and Ryobi. They were looking for a great day, and, and he's been doing better. I mean, this is this is not an easy game out here. They've been improving on what they were doing. But tough day. Sometimes you can't avoid these mishaps, and he got into that one, and the crew will go to work trying to remove the panels they can remove to get him back out on the racetrack. I see the team down there. See the pry bar coming out. They're trying to do whatever they can to get as much removed as they can. I say they're going to have to pull the front bumper off, possibly the fender. Trying to rip that away. 
see if there's any bars or anything. The air box is clear. All the all the brake hoses are coming off as well. So see if Weller's able to continue on. Strong's 56 machine also on pit road. The team working on that on the right side. Car up on four jack stands. So I'm going to say the Strawn most likely done for this one. And they'll go to work and start making preparations for the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150. Brandon Watson in the Leland Industries number 64. Shay Gemmel in the North Country Property Maintenance number 8. They make up row number 1 as they come to this restart behind them. Series regular CJ Kennington in the 17 and Brett Taylor in the 3. Watson again with a great launch down the bottom side of the racetrack. Able to power out that 64 machine. Demo though played it smart, able to slide into second. Here comes Brett Taylor up on the high side of the racetrack. Looking to the outside of DJ Kennington down the back straightaway. The Fast City Race for a number three machine. Trying to make the high side of the racetrack work. He's got the opening. He'll slide in line. Contact from behind from Andrew Ranger. The 51 machine looking for room to work. Trying to crack the top five on the outside of LP Dublin. It's not tough to get around the corner when you're being pushed from behind, but that's what Ranger was doing. He wants to get going in that 51 machine, and he's found some giddy up in the high groove, able to clear the 47 of LP Dumoulin. So give the driver from Roxton Pond, Quebec, some credit. Andrew Ranger making a great pass on the high side. I thought Dumoulin was going to be in trouble there. Donald Teague was looking to the high side as well. Tried to make the run down the back straight. We didn't have enough, and now he's going to fall back in the clutches of Mark Antoine Cameron. Cameron now takes that position away. Alex Gannett going to, going to capitalize as well while Teague is up on the high side of the racetrack. Teague gets sideways down in the side of the 52 car and straighten that car out through turns three and four. He's now under pressure. Trayton Lapsovich with the high side trying to work his way forward after getting the lucky dog on that last caution. Lapsovich working that outside group on Dexter Stacy. Meanwhile, at the front, we've got a trio of drivers. There is less than 25 laps to go in the quick, quick fire starters. 125. Brandon Watson with the lead, but Shea Gamble looking mighty quick in that number eight. Watson gets loose down into one. Gamble gets him looser. He'll drive to the inside for the lead. What's Kennington going to do here? He's going to stuff it in the bottom underneath Watson. Watson will pinch him down as much as he can. They beat, they bang off turn four. Gamble with the lead of the line. Watson second. Kennington's third. And they're still racing tight for second through one and two. Gemma looking to make this statement, starting to pull away. Kennington now able to clear Watson off a two and down the back straight away. Brett Taylor under pressure, getting the push down the back straight from Andrew Ranger. That's for the four spot. Taylor up the hill. Here comes Ranger in the 51 machine down on the bottom. Three wide. Looks like trouble for Taylor. Might be a right front flat or something broken on that right side. The car rolling over now on the right front. He's up on the high side of the racetrack. Everyone going by. Here comes Trayton Lasovich. Taylor still up high. See if everyone's able to get clear of him and he can get to the bottom side of the racetrack. Looks like he will not, though. Caution going to come out as down the back straightaway. Taylor has come to a stop just under the scoreboard on the back straightaway. Now we'll get that car moving again. Yeah, Brett Taylor dropped the anchor. He knew he had to get to the pits to get that car service. He comes to rest to bring out the yellow. The big question is you have to wonder. It doesn't look like it's a right front tire. It looks like something in the right front suspension has collapsed. So... I don't think it's going to be a quick fix by any means. I could be mistaken. We'll find out once the team gets the hood up and goes to work on the right front. But I do not believe that is a right front flat tire. No, you're absolutely right there. So there's something going on there. And the team will lift on the body to try to get the jack underneath. That's how far that car is laying over as they'll pull off this right front. And they're going to look in. No, they're not. They're just going to put, they, the, put the new tire on. I mean, when they drop the jack, that'll be the telling, telling feature here. Oh, maybe it was just a flat tire. That car did not lean over on the right front as hard that time with the new tire. We'll see what happens when he once he gets moving and puts a load on it, but I, maybe, I, maybe it was only flat on the bottom, guys. Oh, uh, we can always count on you, Jamie Monsley. Let's set the stage once again. I'm Adam Ross, joined by Brendan Doherty, Jamie Monsley. We are here for the final day of NASCAR Pinty Series competition. We want to thank you so much. It's been a long weekend of racing here at Delaware Speedway, but man, what an atmosphere, what an event. Thank you for being here. Guys, for the way the weather looked, you know, when you were checking on Tuesday or Wednesday, did, did you think we would have had run everything by this point? No, I thought Sunday was going to be a lot of racing on the track. But uh, everything is run pretty much on schedule. There's been some delays, and, and this event has not disappointed, although I will say this looks more like a fall brawl than, although it could look like a fire starter too. We, we've seen everything but.
I mean, if this is the fall brawl, I don't want to know what the 150 is going to look like coming up next, the way these drivers are going at it. Now it'll be interesting to see on the restart, Kennington going to be up on the high side, Watson back to the bottom. Shea Gemmel started to pull away before the caution came out. We'll see what he can do with that North Country property maintenance number eight machine, one of the fastest cars on the property right now. Well, the way it looks right now, it looks like they're going to head into race number two with LB Dumoulin being the point leader. So DJ Kennington was 21 points behind Dumoulin coming into this one. So super important for him. If he wants to win the championship, to get out front of Shea Gemmel on this restart and get this win. So definitely a lot riding on the line in terms of the championship pitcher for Kennington. All Gemmel wants is a trophy. And I'll tell you what is also important here. Look up and down this line. Look at the cars that don't have damage. And Shea Gemmel, there's damage to the front end of that number eight. But DJ Kennington, 17, looks clean. Brandon Watson, 64, looks clean. Ranger has some damage. LP has some rubber marks. Cameron with some rubber marks. And it may not seem like a lot, but when you have to get the car ready for race number two. Uh, body, these, you don't want to worry about body panels. You want to fix everything else. No, but every mark on the body indicates something has hit your race car, and that could lead to these cars are set up so precisely. Your ride heights, your suspension, it, everything about them. Every rubber mark on that race car is an indication that something has been hit and Brett Taylor being stopped at the end of pit road. Came back down to the attention of the crew and then got going again. So I'm assuming this is some sort of penalties being held for. Maybe came to pit road too soon before it was open. Or it might even be the uh, the fact that the lay and pray on the back straight away. Gonna oh, that's, a, yeah, bringing out the yellow. Going to serve a penalty for uh, for the lay and pray on the back straight away, so. Sam Fellows getting the lucky dog. He'll roll around to the back of the pack, back up on the lead lap. And I'm, I'm so happy for Sam Fellows there. He's driving well today. He got into that skirmish a little bit earlier. We're hearing there may be a penalty coming to the seven of Pete Shepard. They've put a tire on that car. It was not an approved tire change, but here we go. DJ Kennington laying back in that casserole edge 17. He'll try to contend with Shea Gemmel, but Gemmel with a great restart up the inside. Gemmel with the best restart so far. As the control car down on the bottom, here comes Brandon Watson, the inside of DJ Kennington. Kennington up on the high side. Gonna be able to slide in line behind Brandon Watson. Battles on for the fourth Styers, spot. Glenn Styers around, Styers middle of the back stretch. And the yellow flag going to come out for Glenn Styers backwards. And what this is doing, folks, remember, 125 laps is the scheduled distance. They will do everything they can to end this race under green with overtime finishes. But who does it favor? The closer we get to the end of the race, the closer these sprints get to the checkers, who do you think this favors, fellows? A savvy veteran or, or someone who's brand new who doesn't know what he doesn't know? I, I think uh, here's a scoop. Even though DJ is the longtime uh, veteran of this series, and Brandon Watson's done it all. He's been there. He's done that. Shea Gemmel, he's won in the APC Tour. He's he's won championships before. He's been there and done that, just not at this level. But I'm sure he's not intimidated by out, out there racing against Watson. I mean, he races with Brandon Watson every single week. No, and you, you make a great point. Uh, then it comes down a little bit to desire. It comes down to... Who wants it the worst? Who's willing to go that step above? And well, DJ Kennington was willing to do that Friday night. And it's who's got the most on the line. That's the other thing. Uh, DJ, obviously, he's you know he wins this race, puts him in a way better position for the nightcap later on. And how about that three wide coming off turn two? You had Ranger up by the wall, Cameron in the middle. Uh, Gannett was in there as well. That was a wet, hot mess looking for a place to happen, and luckily they got it all straightened out. I just pictured a three-car uh, mess on the backstretch there when they got wide like that. I don't know what's the problem with the eight of Shea Gemmel. He is slow on the back straightaway off of turn number two as though the car has lost fire. Not good for the North Country property. I mean, it's number eight machine from the lead. Wow. And I believe the NASCAR rule is they have to keep pace with the pace car. Yes. So even if he gets fired now, he falls in where he falls in. And who taught us that lesson? Marcus Ambrose. That's right. Sears Point. I, I thought for sure, Jamie, that Jamie is the historian of the bunch as we officially get the 10-to-go signal, and Shea Gamble has come up short. 
now he fires that eight machine and takes off. But the damage is done, and, and the best he can start now is the tail just, end of some, the lead lap. Something just came flying either out of that car or he picked something up in turn four. There was a big chunk of something went straight up in the air when he was going through turn four. So that's going to hand things over to DJ Kennington. He'll now be the control car on the restart. Brian Watson in second. Doolin gonna gonna also get a little bit of advantage. The plot thickens, fellas. So the advantage for Doolin is, from the looks of it, he was gonna restart in the sixth position on the restart on the outside. Now he's back to fifth where he was on the previous restart, down on the bottom, where he's almost, I'm gonna say, the preferred line where you're gonna want to be on a restart. So Doomlin uh, trying to keep Kennington at bay at this point with Tagliani out of the race as we get ready for the Pinty's Fall Brawl 150 after this to tell the police championship here with the NASCAR Pinty Series. So, now Fellows is getting another lap back, so he must have been two down when he got the Lucky Dog last time around. Yeah, I didn't realize that. And we look at the safety vehicle headed down the front straightaway. I don't know that they stopped to pick anything up, Jamie, but maybe they did. I thought they grabbed a small piece of debris down on the front straightaway just off of four. The driver just reached out and grabbed it. So it might have been something small, but something nonetheless, possibly from the eight machine. We'll give you a rundown. With one to go to this restart, they're going to restart with six laps remaining. DJ Kennington in the 17 is your race leader. The 64, Brandon Watson is second. Andrew Ranger third in the 51. The 22 is Mark Antoine Cameron. He runs fourth. LP Dumoulin in the 47 is fifth. Donald Teej in the 80 runs sixth. And then it's the 52 of Alice Gannett. The 20 of Trayton Lapsovich. The 92 of Dexter Stacy, The 84 of Larry Jackson. And the 8 of Shea Gemmel. They are all on the lead lap. And now so is the 98 of Sam Fellows. Pace car to pit road. Here we go. Could be the final restart of this one as we come off of turn number four. Both drivers on the loud pedals. They come down the front straightaway, Kennington down on the bottom. Watson on the high side, the side by side down into turn number one. Kennington with the advantage down on the bottom. Watson gonna try to slide in line behind him down the back straightaway we go. Andrew Ranger up to the third spot, side by side for fourth. LP Dumlin and Mark Antoine Cameron side by side as they race off at turn number four. Ranger drove it deep into turn one and two and left that bottom open, but they weren't able to capitalize and how about DJ Kennington? He's just had to outweight everybody here to get to the front here today. But a perfect restart with five to go this time by. He is your leader. He's a grizzled veteran, DJ Kennington. But Brandon Watson, he wants it in the 64. Watson to the inside. Five laps to go to settle this one. Watson knows he needs to go. Andrew Ranger is coming. He's starting to pressure the 64 car. Kennington trying to get away. Trying to hold off the 64. Brandon Watson down into turn number three. Here comes Brandon Watson to the inside of DJ Kennington. Kennington goes up the hill just a little bit. Down the front straightaway. Watson still with a nose to the inside. He'll drive it deep into turn number one. Down on the bottom. Here comes Andrew Ranger looking to make it three wide. Doesn't have enough of a run off of two. Down the back straightaway. Andrew Ranger looking for racing room as well as they're side by side for the lead. Watson in the 64. Kennington up high. Look at this door to door racing for the win here. Three laps to go. Kennington with the advantage at the line, but Watson. Oh, oh, big hit in turn number one. Shea Gemmel slams the wall, driver's side. You can see him moving around in the race car. I don't think Shea Gemmel is very happy behind the wheel of that number eight. The window not coming down very quickly. Great to see he's getting out. Not happy. We'll see who he's going to be. Uh, yeah, he's, he's looking for somebody. He's about to show us who he's unhappy with as he unstraps his equipment there and climbs out of the car. Almost looks like a character out of Mad Max with his cool air hose hanging off the back. I feel it might be the 22 of Cameron. Cameron was sideways up there as well. Not sure if they got together or not. Cameron, whoa, goes up and I don't want to say takes a run at, but wow. he goes up and lets his intentions know that he's not happy with Shea Gemmel. We are going to see some NASCAR overtime as Shea Gemmel making that long walk back to the pit area. He's, that was a gnarly hit, folks. He's limping, too. So the red flag is out. We're going to stop these cars on the back straightaway. Jeff Wilcox, the technical director for the NASCAR Pinty Series, is greeting Shea Gemmel, and he will escort him. Let's have a look at this replay, folks. 
The battle for the lead was on side by side, but Gemmel, my goodness, that car is shortened up. Just catching the tail end of that, you could see how big of a hit it was. You didn't have to see the beginning to know no, that, was, exactly. that was a big impact down into turn number one. Mark Antoine Cameron, the driver of that number 22, was not impressed with that move. And as we get ready for NASCAR overtime, LP Dumoulin is not in the spot you want to be in. The worst spot to restart, especially late in the race, is fourth. I will fight you if you tell me any different. If you're on the outside of the front row, you've got a chance, right? You can, you can try to manipulate the start. If you're on the inside row, you're in the fast line. If you're fourth, you're at the mercy of everyone around you. It, it depends on what track you're at, but you're right here. <laughs> you know, like there's some places where the fast groove is just is just as fast as the inside. You're right here. <laughs> it, it's just a spot where you're. You're helpless to the situation. You have no control over what what is about to go on. If you're the leader and you go into turn one a little bit hot, slide the outside pole sitter up the racetrack, fourth place is going to get it. Yep. If the third place car wants to get over aggressive, make it three wide on the front row, guess who gets it? The fourth place car is in the worst spot as we had another look at the aftermath. And the guy, if the guy running six gets a little sliver of hope going down into turn one, again, not good to be running fourth. But the only good news for Dumoulin is he's going to start right behind DJ Kennington, the driver he's got to be most worried about in the point standings right now. Kennington trying to close the gap as much as he can. He's also got Andrew Ranger there as well. Ranger trying to do what he can. Those two, uh, Kennington and Ranger, both 25 and 26 points back. Coming into this one of Tegliani, it's basically 20 and 21 points ahead. Well, and now we'll see when they go back to the last completed lap, who is the race leader? Is it DJ Kennington or is it Brandon Watson? Well, that will be the question. Trayton Lapsovich has done a beautiful job. He's got himself back up well inside of that top 10. He's going to be a factor. He was making some pretty bold moves on that restart. As we look at replays here, Brandon Watson... Through turns one and two, watching that battle for the lead. And, yeesh. and it was the coil spring down the racetrack out of the rear end of the eight machine. But just as just as we pan past there, you see Cameron sideways coming into frame before you caught the eight of Gemmel. And I don't know what they bring to the racetrack. Ed Hackens in racing, which is who prepared the eight of Shea Gemmel. They've also got Brett Taylor. They've also got Dexter Stacy in the field. So... They may have a fourth car without much branding on it. I'm not sure. Be curious to see if they uh, they go to the soccer, but the team not seemingly moving too quick down there. This is big, folks. DJ Kennington is back at the front of the line in that number 17. The way they score this NASCAR Touring Series, if you're used to watching the NASCAR Cup Series, they've got timing loops all over the racetrack. So you can basically freeze the field at any point you want. With the NASCAR Pinty Series, our timing and scoring loop is on the front straightaway at the start finish line. So to be fair and to provide accurate scoring, when the yellow comes out, they go back to the last completed lap. So they don't go to the last lap that the leader crossed the line. They go back to the last lap where the last place car crossed the line. That's how they set the order. So it can be confusing, particularly on a road course where, where the laps are, are very long. Lots can happen. So you see a few cars unable to refire. The 52 of Gannett needed a push. Donald Teague going to need one. Brett Weller and TJ Renamato all going to need a push to get rolling again on the back straightaway. Guys, look who's up in uh, fifth now. Trayton Lapsovich. Yeah, Trayton's doing a great job. This this is curious to me. Once they refire, normally they will not let a, let a car go a lap down that needs a push because you, you retain your position if you can't refire after a red flag. So they will have to, if that's what they're going to do, send the 80 of Donald Teach around the field, around the pace car to make up that lap physically, I would think. Yeah, they are saying that 8-0 past the field. They'll have him pass the pace car, but they can't put him back in line where he was. He has to run the lap that everyone else ran 
It may sound silly, but every every lap matters. Every gallon of fuel used up. So they'll send Tej all the way around the field, around the pace car, and then let him come back, catch the field, and get back into his spot. And there goes Reno Model, the last car, needing to refire off the back straight away. He's going to have to do it twice. Yeah, you're right. And they, I, we see Brent Weller doing that. So nice job by the NASCAR officials to relay that message to the team spotters who relayed that message to the drivers. So Donald Teach in the 80 is now back on the lead lap. He will go back to the spot where he was, which I believe is around fifth or sixth. There's been so much going on. I mean, this this has had a bit of everything. So you have to wonder how aggressive is Andrew Ranger going to be on the restart? He was really starting to close in on, on Brandon Watson, implied the pressure for Watson to get ahead of Kennington and get moving. So we'll have to see what Ranger does here on the restart. He'll be the first car on the inside of row number two. Well, in Cameron, you see how hot Cameron got. I don't know if we, that might be a tall replay to bring up, but that last restart, Andrew Ranger had his hands full because Cameron pushed him into the corner. Ranger sideways going into turn number one, but still maintained a good run down the backstretch in that third spot. So they will open pit road now that they, they have the race order correct. Now the number of laps don't even matter. This was a 125 lap race, so they want to they've got to get a green white checker in to finish this. Alex Tagliani has been pushed back on the racetrack. Let's look at this last restart. They come up off of turn number four, trying to get up to speed. Cameron immediately behind Ranger. Look how sideways Ranger goes. Oh, wow. All all the way into the turn. I mean, that was chaos. And the only thing that really helped Ranger was that Cameron got help from behind to loosen him up and get him off of Ranger's rear bumper. Great job by our production crew. Top notch. I wonder if they had that a little bit more through where you saw what, what happened ahead of time between the 22 and the 8. Yeah, I, I would have been curious. so Because it, uh... it would have been about 10 seconds after what we just saw on the, on the monitor. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're right. Let's start this. So it's easy to know what the camera angle should like and look like and where they should be covering it when you're sitting up here watching replays, right? Absolutely. They should be wherever the story <laughs> is. We have a story to tell. One to go. Next time out of turn four, we'll set them loose for a green, white, checker finish. DJ Kennington in the Castro Edge Dodge going to fire first. Brandon Watson in the 64 on the outside, looking for his first career win. It's worth noting DJ Kennington, that Castrol Edge 17, the only driver who has run in every race in the history of the NASCAR Pinty Series. He is the Iron Man. The Iron Man's going to have his hands full here on the restart. He might have set the precedence for the weekend with his move on Friday night. We'll have to see what happens here. Andrew Ranger going to restart behind him. Brandon Watson to his outside. It'll be Doomlin outside of row number two in the fourth spot. Green flag in the air off of turn number four. We are overtime racing. Brandon Watson tried to slide in line down behind DJ Kenton. Andrew Ranger fills the spot. Ranger now up to second. Watson will be able to slide in line behind Andrew Ranger down the back straightaway. Kennington, though, car length advantage over the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Kennington with a great restart. He got that launch. He's got Andrew Ranger right behind him in the 51. Ranger going to try to hold off Brandon Watson, and it is all DJ Kennington out in front in that Castro Edge Dodge. It has been a while since DJ Kennington went back to back in the NASCAR PT Series, but if he can hang on, the quick, quick fire starters 125. It took him 132 laps to do it, but DJ Kennington for the win. Brandon Watson second, Andrew Ranger third, then it's Alex Gannett, Trayton Lapsovich, and this is a big deal. LP Dumlin was not able to hang on to fourth. He falls back to the sixth spot. Race fans, we are going to have an epic championship battle here for the Pinty's Fall Brawl. Brandon Watson pulls up alongside DJ Kennington, the 17. 
Not sure if it was to give him a thumbs up or to say, hey, you fired pretty early on that restart. Kenny can give the thumbs up regardless of what Watson was doing. He's pleased, but Brandon Watson putting on a good showing. He'll head back to the pit area. Everyone going to go to work on these cars. Kenny can be slightly delayed with the, the visit to victory lane. But, but look, there's not even a mark. So you can see the general tire logo on those right side tires. That's exactly what they want, right? That means he didn't rub up against anybody. DJ Kennington, he's an old pro. He knows what he's doing. Oh, is that Ed Hackinson that just came out to kick the number 22? They are they're hammering on the 22. They're jacked in. Come on, Rosie. Here we go. Get it on on the front straightaway. It's the fall brawl preview. Cameron getting out of there. Well, Other least... teams coming in to try to separate them. We got a brawl on the. We got a brawl on pit road just behind T.J. Kennington's car. Here comes Fritz into the mix. Get you some, Fritz. Holy moly! What a melee on the front stretch. They are all duking it out. I want to camera. I, I want to know who that is that was the first one out there. Wow, tempers are flaring. This ain't over. That is for sure. We got to do it all again in about 30 minutes from now. This is fantastic. Jason Hathaway putting his arm around one of the GM Paye team members. Wow. Well, that was something. So DJ Kennington's still in the race car, and he still has a windshield on it, so I'm nobody's come to him and attacked him with the jack stand. I'm very happy he took his time getting out so we could watch all that. You, you got to have, you got to be able to control your left eye different from your right eye and be able to see it all. But folks, he is about to climb out of this race car. Here he is, folks. DJ Kennington reigns victorious in the quick, quick fire starter 125. The kids give him congratulation. The crew down there smiling. There was drama in that race, but DJ Kennington was really not part of it. Just a great job, a great run by Kennington out there as he's greeted by Todd Lewis. Very clean counter Edge 17 machine. And the same thing for Brandon Watson, 64. Those two race clean the whole race. They don't even have to worry about getting the tire marks off for race number two. They don't have to go to body work. They are going to work on setup and bettering those two race cars. A lot of other teams, they're going to work on body panels and making sure everything is tipped off for round number two before they start getting the setup stuff. Brandon Watson, driver of the number 64, has been sent to victory lane where Todd Lewis will give him an interview. Folks, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Let's hear it with a round of applause. Who liked what they saw in the Quick Wick Firestarter 125? Who's ready to see them really get it on in the Pinty's Fall Brawl? What a battle. NASCAR officials down having conversations with the 22 of Mark Antoine Camerant. I gotta wonder if it did any damage to the windshield. They were hammered on the on the, the right side of the windshield, but uh, one of those things that maybe not gonna be as important today as it would be on a road course, need to see out the left and right side of the windshield, but uh, that team's gonna have a bunch of work to do from the extracurricular activity now. You know, I don't mind. You know, we get excited when these things happen, and, and if teams get worked up and, and people wanna have fisticuffs, go to it. Leave the jack stands in the pits. Leave the jack handles in the pits. That's something where I would strongly consider not inviting those people to race number two. Here's the exit. Get out of the property. We have a race to put on. Like I, like I say, when, when drivers are passionate and they push and shove and crews push and shove, uh, that, is, that has sort of become accepted as, okay, they're, they're blowing off their steam. When you bring something like that to the party, that, that's a hard no for me. 
Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Any penalties get doled out? What, what becomes of race number two when we get to the actual Pinty's Fall Brawl? Well, let's find out. I hear a microphone come to life down there in Victory Lane. I can't see who's got it. There we go. It's our producer, Joel. As we head in to have a word with DJ Cannington, Joel Robinson going to be the man on the spot to have the word. DJ, another big win here. Two in a row. Can you do three? I hope so. I mean, uh, the car's a little bit off right now, but I know the guys got a few ideas what we're going to try here for the next one. Uh, there was a lot of great cars out there, and some guys had troubles, obviously, but uh, we were lucky enough to hang in there for this Castrol Edge Dodge. And Castrol, Spark Power, Brian Cathcart, Joe from Will Ride, everybody that helps us. Thank you, my family. Uh, it's my dad's birthday today. He's 81. Happy birthday, Dad. Let's go get another one. Thanks so much, Joel. Great job, DJ Kennington. For those of you watching on TSN Go, TSN.ca, or the NBC Gold Track Pass, we're going to say so long until race number two of the afternoon, the Pinty's Fall Brawl. And for those of you in the stands, just take it all in. What, what a day. What a series of events. It has been absolutely wild.